Now we are going to talk about cloning vector and its cloning sites. We had discussed that we need a vector, we need it to act as a selectable marker, but it must have cloning sites inside it. Now what we have over here that is represented, it is the E. coli cloning vector. E. coli is a bacteria. We have designed a plasmid known as PBR322. This is the cloning vector which is greatly used for the host E. coli. Now this P stands for plasmid. It is important, it is studied greatly because it was uh, created in the lab of Herbert Boyer in 1977 and this BR part is uh, naming given to Bolivar and Rodriguez, this 3 to 2 is its number. So we have this plasmid that is having 4361 4, base pairs in its composition. So it is a small cloning vector, it could be studied easily. Now what do we have in it? This plasmid was designed in such a way that it has an ampicillin resistance gene and a tetracycline resistance genes. And apart from that, it is having many sites. Now what are these sites? These are cloning sites. Now what would be cloning site be like? Firstly, it should be after origin of replication, ORI sequence should be there. There has to be a restriction endonuclease for a particular site, okay, and that happens to be cloning site. And when we are studying about this PBR322, we are going to see how antibiotic resistance, which is imparted into E. coli using this PBR322, acts as a selectable marker. Now, what you see, this this plasmid is having two resistances against antibiotics. When this plasmid an enters the E. coli, which is not having any resistance for both of these antibiotics, it is going to show resistance. That means the plasmid had entered the host. And what that meant? That meant transformation. But whether the plasmid is a recombinant or not, which has transformed the host cell, that could be identifying using these restriction sites at our disposal. Now we have uh, many restriction sites, we have PVU2, we have SAL1, we have BAMH1, we have HIND3, we have CLA1, we have ECOR1, we have PVU1 and we have PCT1. These are the different sites. Now this is certainly a restriction endonuclease site which is shown over here. As you can see that we have HIND3. Now what does this HIND3 mean? While we were discussing restriction endonucleases, we had talked that there is a certain process in which, according to which the restriction endonuclease is named. As you know, the restriction endonuclease is taken from a specific prokaryote or a bacteria. A bacteria is going to produce a restriction endonuclease which would help in its immunity by cutting the genome of the virus. This was what we had, we had done. Now that bacteria has its... Uh, specific and generic name. So, the first word of specific name that is, no sorry, generic name. Supposedly, we are getting hind 3 from Haemophilus influenzae. Okay. Now, we take H from here and two first alphabets from the specific epithet HIN, you get HIN over here, Haemophilus influenzae gave us this endonuclease, so you take up H, you take up IN from the specific name, you put it HIN, then whether the, what kind of strain it is, that is given a designation as the fourth letter, okay, so if it is a D strain, it depends on uh, different uh, physiological aspects of the cell. So, we have D over here and these Roman alphabets or the Roman digits, they show the series or the chronological order in which the enzyme has been discovered. So, we have this arrangement and from here you can make it out that all these first and second third words, first one being the generic and the second one being specific epithet show that these endonucleases are taken up from some or other. Uh, prokaryotic cell, some or other bacteria. Now coming back to why we were saying that this is uh, the restriction site. The restriction site is the cloning site. It must be after the origin of replication site so that the clones could be obtained easily. 
Now, as we say that we had to uh, make a selectable marker, this is an artificial plasmid. This has two resistance genes. Now, supposedly you want to put your gene of interest over here, okay? Or you put, you put that gene of interest over here and you put another enzyme and you put another restriction endonuclease and you put another gene sequence which comes and disrupts this. Ampicillin resistance gene is being disrupted, okay. Some gene sequence comes and fits over here while your gene interest fits over here. Now once your gene of interest has fit inside the plasmid, now this vector becomes recombinant, okay. Now to identify whether it has become recombinant, you just alter the specification of this particular gene or this particular gene and put some gene into this arrangement. When some gene, some gene interest has been added into the gene coding for ampicillin resistance, certainly ampicillin resistance will be gone and then you can make it out by plating those host cells which have taken up this plasmid on the antibiotic, you can make it out which ones are recombinant and which ones are non-recombinant. So you use this antibiotic resistance which is imparted by the vector as a selectable marker in the E. coli. Earlier the E. coli did not have any antibiotic resistance but supposedly it is showing tetracycline resistance that means it has been inserted with your gene of interest that means whatever E. coli you are having they are transformants. Then you have to check it whether it grows on ampicillin if it does not you are quite certain that now recombinant vector has entered the host cell. So this is what you have to remember when you study about PBR322 this is an important uh, vector that is why we have discussed you have to remember the various sites I would suggest you to practice this diagram so that it stays in your mind and uh, diagram practicing is never a loss. So practice this diagram understand what is the concept E. coli did not have this uh, vector it was uh, made artificially it is used in E. coli every time we put two resistances into E. coli but if we are aiming at transformants then we should put the gene of interest we should silence one of the ampicillin or tetracycline resistance and get to know which ones are recombinants and which ones are non-recombinants.